are so many questions at the moment, and there are some pointers. For example, it seems obvious, stop selling arms to Israel, and maybe the violence would stop. But how do we make this happen? And hopefully, again, we will get suggestions. Um, may I now invite Ahmad Shahidov, head of Azerbaijan Institute for Democracy and Human Rights, Human Rights Defender Azerbaijan. So, um, Ahmed uh, Shahidov, you've heard what everybody has to say. And what is your view on this whole theme of our seminar today? Thank you, Madam Chair, the uh, organizers. First of all, I want to thank uh, all of organizers, uh, Mr. Mehta, for organizing such important conference because uh, it's a very important topic that we have uh, to discuss and uh, get uh, concrete solution because it's already uh, five months the human tragedy, uh, the genocide is going on in the Middle East and uh, I don't think that uh, we have to approach to this uh, issue from the religious or ethnic uh, side because uh, this is the uh, human issue and the main humanitarian uh, laws, main humanitarian norms are being violated in Palestine. And of course, we condemn the uh, Hamas attack to Israeli uh, civilians, but the response of Israel army to this attack is more than a war, and it's not war going on in Palestine, it's genocide. And the target is the Israeli army, is not only the Hamas, because uh, the last five months, already uh, 30,000 civilians were killed in Palestine and there is no any international mechanism to stop this uh, brutality. I remember uh, in October when I uh, uh, made speech in OEC Human Dimension Implementation Meeting in Warsaw, it is on uh, October 8 when the, uh, Hamas attacked the Israeli cities. All uh, 57 uh, uh, member states of OEC uh, condemn this attack. Also, as a human rights defender, I also condemn this attack because uh, uh, no civilians should be uh, targeted during the conflict. But unfortunately, no any uh, ambassadors, no any diplomats from OEC countries talked about the reason of this war, about the violation of these uh, international legislation, international law. And what we see the last five months in the Middle East, uh, somehow the Israel uh, used this Hamas attack uh, like a uh, uh, reason to destroy all uh, Gaza, destroy uh, the other cities of Palestine. And what happened in uh, recent months once again showed that Israel is not uh, the only uh, country that uh, do it because uh, Israel is a very small country and attack uh, to Palestine and there are uh, almost 200 countries in the world and I remember in October in New York I, 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 I attended the UN Security Council uh, hearings on Israel-Palestinian war from one side 120 countries called for uh, immediately um, suspend these military operations and for ceasefire. And on the other side, it was only United States, uh, Israel and other uh, two, three countries, I don't remember. And because of US uh, veto, uh, these uh, resolutions were not adopted. And th this is the uh, uh, somehow the reality of our today's world. Only few countries in the world including United States, China, Russia, France, UK, they decide what will happen in the world. And this is unjust, as I think. And no one in the world uh, care about the uh, rights of Palestinian people. And it gives more chance and power to Israel to continue uh, this brutality, this uh, genocide in Middle East. And uh, previous speakers, Jonathan, talked about the uh, Ramadan holiday. This is the very uh, important and holy holiday of all Muslim people. And I am a uh, Muslim uh, people from Azerbaijan. We also believe that uh, God um, uh, doesn't allow to any uh, killings during this uh, holiday. But uh, 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 anyway, Israel say that they will continue this military operation. And what we can do now, 
we, we are uh, really weak to stop Israel as an international community, I mean, as a uh, civil society, as a human rights defender. We, we cannot do anything. I have been in the United States, in UK, in other Western countries. Of course, the Muslim communities in uh, Western countries, they criticize and they condemn this brutality. They uh, organize um, uh, protest actions, uh, actions in front of the White House, in front of the Israel embassy or in their countries, in those countries, but no uh, result, no uh, any uh, positive steps. Uh, be taken and uh, because of the United States uh, support to Israel Tel Aviv feels very really comfortable uh, and continue this brutality and I just want to underline uh, the uh, mediation role of some countries and uh, Turkey and Qatar they are all the one of the key countries that can, they can uh, make a uh, very positive steps in a mediation process and suspend at least suspend these uh, military operations by israel because uh, uh, for example qatar has very good uh, contacts with hamas leaders with palestinian uh, authorities and with israel as well and we uh, have to uh, uh, appreciate uh, this qatar's role in this mediation process because now Israel wants to be released uh, these Israeli civilians from Hamas um, hostages. But anyway, there are thousands of Palestinians in Israel prisons and no one talks about these people. And they are not the fighters, they are the civilians, they are women, elder people, they are children. And if uh, we talk about the civilians, if we talk about them, uh, prisoners of war we have to uh, talk about the palestinian as well because this is the uh, a clear double standards if we talk about the anti-semitism if we talk about the right of self-defense of israel but never touch about the palestinian people because uh, they are also human beings and they are also one of us and they are suffering from this uh, genocide and the, another thing that i want to underline is food justice food security in middle east I remember in February 7, uh, I was in Doha in Qatar and National Human Rights Committee of Qatar organized very important international conference on food security and all speakers from Muslim countries, even from Western countries, they um, raised the issue of food security, food justice in the Middle East, but no results. Israel uh, today uh, closed all roads to uh, Palestine and uh, didn't uh, allow any humanitarian aid uh, to be delivered to Palestinians. And there is no other chance for international community. And I think that uh, Israel, uh, uh, Israel's target is not only Hamas. The Israel is wants to completely destroy Gaza. Uh, even now they are talking about uh, starting launching the new military operations in Rafah the other city of the Palestinian and because of United States open support Israel Tel Aviv uh, and Netanyahu uh, government feels very free to continue this military operation what we can do as a human rights defender of course as I said before I highly appreciate the organizing uh, these online conferences and I do thank to Mr. Mehta to uh, Madam Chair and all participants here but we have to uh, uh, organize meeting and push Israeli uh, government, Israeli ambassadors, uh, ambassadors in our own cities, in our countries. And if they will feel this pressure from international communities, especially from Western countries, because Israel today, uh, never mind about the what's, what's talking and discussing in uh, Arabic countries, in Muslim countries, especially uh, the uh, main responsibility lies on Western countries, in our colleagues in UK, in United States, because uh, these two countries are very close ally of uh, Israel and the human rights defender, the Western people like you have uh, to meet with Israeli uh, diplomats and uh, talk to them uh, at least to suspend this means of operation because there is no other international mechanism and if we talk about the violation of human rights in other countries for example in my country in azerbaijan in turkey in other countries post soviet countries all leading international uh, human rights institutions 
uh, they make statements about this uh, violation of human rights. But those Western uh, organizations, those European organizations are now silent and they blind their eyes to atrocity and genocide that going on in Palestine. And uh, as I said in my uh, speech, um, that uh, we uh, have not to approach to this conflict, to this uh, issue from ethnic or from religious aspects. This is the human uh, issue and the violation of human rights. And we are at the human rights defenders as to uh, raise this issue, the violation of international law, violation of human rights. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Shahidov. Um, it's very, very sobering hearing what you have to say. And um, so Israel has clearly crossed, as we said, broken, you know, inter gone through international lines, laws, and just pressing ahead with whatever his goal might be. But the what do the panelists think um, that they can do to counter what happens is any criticism of Israel being presented as anti-Semitic, which seems to be a standard response. Um, anybody want to comment on that out of the speakers? What do you think? Perhaps? 